Everything is interesting, keep on watching Boss led me to educated Chain of music, lifestyle, politics Your health, everything is entertaining You know boss led me to Ba 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 boss led me You can know more, boss led me to Ba 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 boss led me to Sit back and watch, boss led me to Ba 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 boss led me to Welcome to Boss Lady Meets. Welcome to Boss Lady Meets. On today's edition, I have a special guest. He calls himself a psychedelic, psychedelic model and an and, and eccentric TV host. Ladies and gentlemen, keep it rolling for Derele Edu. Hey, me re, me re. Hey, Jade. Hey, wah, wah, wah. Wait. Now, I, I don't know if I should call you what I call you. Okay. Because this is boss lady Moo. So, you know, as a Yoruba child, we have to respect her eggmores. Okay. So I call her auntie. I say, wait, you did not put it well that I'm a family member. Okay, yes. And I'm we sorry. grew up in the Bute Meta. All this psychedelic. Straight out of a Bute Meta. Glover. You understand what I mean? Yes. Way back, we've come a long ah, way, really. High five to, to that. See you. Good to see you. It's wonderful seeing you, so I'm very excited. And I Ooh. must add that they really has been so supportive in the course of my career selfless he's never collected any dime from me most of the contacts that i have in the entertainment industry was from dairy thank ha. you so much really I, I don't know if we should also let her the fact that you know you met somebody special through me but we'll get to that ah. i did small matchmaking for ah. that. <laughs> that one is my that one, let's not go there we're let's not go going there no today yes. today is not there. a day for that exactly so i'm really you know i'm really involved in, mm. We call it, I call mm. it the Akindele dynasty. Exactly. Is there a lay a drunk in the lay? Uh -huh. Let's get it. I like um, that already. May I add that it used to be one of the think tank for Simon Production, right from the return of Jennifer or Morghetto so, from way oh. back, even Jennifer Foundation, even the book Jennifer. Derele has been very supportive. Thank you so much. Ha. And can I also add another part? We were not really supposed to go into all of this, but Auntie Ayo, as I fondly call her, was JJC Skills' manager. <laughs> and I remember when we did the video. Um, his PR manager. Yeah, his PR and A&R. Wow. The video, the, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, are not, we are Africans. African Would you believe that? It was crazy, yo, but Funke was one that drove me to that set. <laughs> and Funke was in the car because, you know, it was Lagos Island. And if yeah. Funke had come, a problem would have. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And, and say I was in charge. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Do you live by Where them see? But, so it's crazy how we're yeah. so intertwined. Exactly. In short, story for another day. Exactly. So really, how's it been for you? Ah, I think at this point in my life where I am, you know, 40 plus, I mm. think it's been a long journey to get here. But I'm at a point in my life now where I have discovered inner peace, inner happiness, anything that tampers with my peace of mind. Ah, be fair. I have set peace of mind as my highest goal and I've organized my life around it. Hmm. You know, I've always been involved in so much chaos and pandemonium, but now I've also found inner happiness. I've not been very lucky with love, hmm. but I've realized at this phase of my life that people like myself that have so much love to give never really get it back in return. So, even on Valentine's Day, they gave me hot breakfast. Hey. I cannot <laughs> love you the way you love me. I said, oh! So I ran for a jog that morning. Mm. And I for came real? back. Yes. It actually, yeah. This is Valentine's. So, away from all of that, I am a family-oriented person as we both are. See, I think I need to start talking about the similarities. <laughs> you know, we're both family-oriented people. And, you know, I'm glad that, you know, my family is doing great. You know, they're healthy. They're amazing. They're doing, you know, well in their endeavors. Mm. And for myself... I'm at the point where I don't, I don't think I have anything to prove anymore. I don't need to validate my existence or my worth. We're still in an industry where, sorry, and I'm you know, digressing a bit, where we have to constantly prove our worth. Mm -hmm. But I've gotten to a point where I could care less, you mm -hmm. know. And with people comparing and contrasting me all over the place, see, mm -hmm. I like anybody. Exactly. So I'm, saying I'm at a good place in my life right now. All right. Yeah. Talking about you being at a point where you care less, does yes. it require a lot of energy being there really? It does, though. Hey! It does. It's not even about the physical energy. Mm. It's a lot of mental energy. Mm. Because, you know, um, when things are going wrong, mm -hmm. you never know. They may actually be going wrong for right, for mm -hmm. the better. Mm -hmm. You know, and for someone like me, who has so much energy to give and I exert so much energy, I don't go home and I'm, I feel burnt. Now, nah, mm. I don't burn out. I've never even burnt out. 
For me, it's more mental energy because everybody comes into my life and they're just taking, 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 mm. taking, taking, and they never really give. Somebody said that to me yesterday. I said, David, you're the only thing in my life that just gives, gives, gives. You never take. Again, I'm a fountain and not a drain. Mm. So because I've realized that too, that I'm a source of blessing and an instrument of, you know, success to other people, I've realized that, ha, it's tasking. Mm. It's a daunting responsibility. Mm. You know, I have family, I have friends, I have colleagues, I have acquaintances. I even have, I call them industry children. Mm. Ha! Mm. My industry children can run me nuts. Yeah. And it's, you have to be at so many places at, you know. So and I'm, I can't really say I'm in a certain industry. I'm in mm. every industry. Mm. You know, when it comes to movies, English, Yoruba, Kanniewood, Gollywood, I am in the mix of everything. Music, new school, old school, music videos, VJing, I'm in the mix. Media. Modeling, mm -hmm. fashion, mm -hmm. it, the list is endless. So, it is a lot of work. A lot of people think that they really was not built in a day. Ha! Mm -hmm. But as I always tell people, you can't create fundamental change without a certain level of madness. Mm -hmm. And my own madness is non-conformity. Mm -hmm. The power to turn my back on the old formula. Mm -hmm. And the courage to invent the future. Mm -hmm. So when I say you're mad, it's an acronym for making a difference. Whoa. So what's the energy? M-A-D, making a difference. A difference. Nice ah, babe. Yes, thank you really. Are you a high maintenance person? Ah, that's a good one, though. Hi, Kini. So I use that, I say that as a joke. Ah, high maintenance to me. You can't maintain me. My maintenance is high, but I am honestly not. I'm not one to go after labels mm -hmm. because I understand my pockets. Mm. And I do not have to buy some things because I want to impress a certain demographic or I want to feel like I'm in the mix of things. I belong to a certain clique. Nah. Mm. There's no pressure being there really, which is good. Mm. For me, if I wear something, I wear it again. Mm -hmm. And because I like it, I will rock it. Mm -hmm. If I look in the mirror, I like what I see. If anybody doesn't like it, you just go and jump over Todd Milan Bridge. <laughs> you know, so that's a good one. But again, because of the fact that we're in the media industry, we're in showbiz, and showbiz is serious business, you know, we also have to put, the way I work, I don't work to just put food on my present table. Mm. I put food for the generation to come, mm. you know, and my job is not just a temporary pastime, it's, you know, something that I live for, I enjoy, I revel in it, mm. and I want people to also see me and enjoy what I am doing, mm -hmm. and want to also be part of that movement. Mm. So... I doubt the high maintenance thing because, like I always say, even what I'm wearing now from head to toe, babe, mm. let me, I'm not kidding. Mm. Dash ni mm. This watch I just got from a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. This one too, mm -hmm. from a friend of mine, Yankee. The, you know, the outfit is from a designer. Mm -hmm. The chains, the hair, the shades, mm -hmm. even the shoes from my Regina So, mm -hmm. it's just, I'm just fortunate to be someone who people want to just you know, grace with gifts, you mm. know, and I rock them the best way I can. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't on the receiving end, mm. then ah, my enemies would have gone bankrupt by now. Mm. But I refuse to. I would not bow to that pressure. Nah. Mm. So, you're obviously daring yes. and a risk um, taker. Yes. So. Where do you draw the line in showbiz? Ha, where do I, okay, yes. So, I would not be hypocritical and pretentious about my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I would not come out and say, yeah, I'm doing this. I'm do there are even a lot of places I've gone to, people I have met that, you know, uh, yes, let, let me summarize it this way. 90% of my life doesn't make it on social media. It's weird, mm -hmm. but that's the truth. So really? It does, yeah, because, so let me tell you why. When I go out, I drop my phones. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, throw myself into the experience. I want to enjoy myself. I don't want to start doing, yeah, we are here, oh, wow, wala mm -hmm. oh. No, <laughs> because, I started my hustle before the advent of the internet. Mm -hmm. I understand the digital space and the digital world and how you have to document everything. A workout these days is wasted if it's not on social media. If you go to the gym, you must put it there. But for me, I know that content is king and mm -hmm. content mobilizes an audience. Mm -hmm. No doubt. But I'm a bit old-fashioned, so I want to enjoy myself. I give, ah, uh, Wale, I throw my phones to Wale, <laughs> and then I'm dancing like last night. I was, we partied hard. I just want to enjoy the experience and not have any distractions whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So, yes, daring, definitely. Mm. Authentic is the word. Original is the word. Mm. I'm just, I like to live in the moment. I want to enjoy myself. When I travel, people don't even see half of the things I do. I remember when I was in Barbados, I went on a submarine, went on a helicopter. I went to Rihanna's house. Like, I just wanted to enjoy myself. Having a phone and having cool is... Ah, it will just distort the activity. Ah, no, no. So, but then we have to, I think, employ people to do these things for us and capture these moments because, mm -hmm. hey, you know, people feel that, ah, put it out there, put content. But I'm that person who, let me use, not 90%, 80% of my life doesn't make it on social media. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, let's take a sneak peek into the future. Okay. Would you support your offspring 
okay. in the future to follow your creative um, lifestyle? That's a brilliant question. I think we're at a point now where we can support our offspring to do as they please. Mm. Reason being, of course, now I'm a parent, mm -hmm. and let me tell you, I started shouldering responsibilities at age 11. Mm. You know, by the time my dad lost his job and my mom was, you know, taking up like three, four, five teaching jobs, I had to, you know, contribute to the home front. So I've not had a regular childhood like everyone else. Mm. We've not enjoyed, and you know what I mean, we've yes, not enjoyed, yes. like looking at mm -hmm. the eight-year-old June, ten-year-old June, we're like, yeah. what? when we were this age, yes. where, were we? where were we? You know, so for someone like me, I didn't have the time to play football on the streets. Of course I did, chased, uh, you know, paper. Um, boats in the gutter, played mm -hmm. in the rain, did what not. But it was more about rewriting my family history and changing my narrative because I grew up in a family house. We lived in a room, half of this, you know, this mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. My mom, my dad, my sisters, and we were constantly picked on and we were bullied so much in that household. There was so much negativity, toxic energy. It was like my cousins and everybody around us just wanted us to just vanish into thin air. Mm. So the need for me was a it was a, not a rude awakening, but it was too mature for me at that point that I needed to contribute to the home front. So I took up a teaching job. Mm. I was teaching. I was doing what I could. You know, then at the same time, I was also responsible for my siblings. Mm. So by the time I could see that there was so much stress on my mom, who's not Nigerian, her hair was falling out, I, and then they were constantly fighting her. Mm. You know, I just said to myself, it's time. So I saved up a lot sent my mom back to her country and I told her, I said, I'll take care of everyone. Mm. So now, down to that question, it's, mm. been, it's been chaotic mm. for me because I've not, I think now is the point where, it, that's why I said it, it was a long journey for me to get here, that I am beginning to enjoy the spoils of my hustle. Mm. But back then, I never did. Mm. And I remember even when I got thrown out of Sound City, and I'll say thrown out because I didn't live on my own, you know, mm. on my own. I, I didn't want to leave, but I was ousted out. Mm. When I left, I had nothing to my name. Mm. And my sisters were in private university. So how was I going to, you know, meet up with that? My car was taken from me. I was in cabs. I became an object of ridicule again. Mm. You know, so I think now I look back, I'm very grateful for how God has brought me, has singled me from that house. From that Edun household, that's Alabai Edun's children. And you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Singled me out and said, you will be the person who will take this family to the next mm. level. And the moment I knew it was going to happen, I keyed into it. You know? And I, every day I wake up, I look, I look at my present surroundings and I ask myself, wow. And we lived in a household where we were all in a room mm. where when it's time to use the toilet, they will lock the toilet. Mm. So you have to do your business mm. in a mm. nylon and train to the next compound. Mm. Until they start throwing it mm. back. <laughs> I say, hey, hey, <laughs> they don't catch me. And my, if my sisters want to use the loo, the youngest one will start crying because mm. she, they would seize the pots, they will feel it. And, you know, and there are times when we'll be cooking. Mm. And if my mom maybe goes to the kitchen, um, to the room to get a spice, we'll come back, we'll see phlegm in it. Mm. You know, so... It was a very toxic household. And if my mom comes back from work, a woman who, does, who is not Nigerian, who is just heading back home, they start shouting. Start, mm. They used to call her Oi Boi back then. Mm. I think there was this Yoruba yeah, series. Yeah, 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 they called my dad, Nkombe. Oh, they called me Kole Dewo. Then they called oh. my sisters, Ayama Matanga. Oh. So we didn't know what it was, but Oi Boi, and they would be clapping. Up. One day, my mom had it up to here. And you know, we grew up in Alagomeji, mm. so Panty was close. Mm -hmm. And most of the officers, mm. their children, mm. you know, mm. were my mom's students and mm. myself. Mm. So my mom just went to the station. Ah! Ah! Mrs. Edwin, what's wrong? She said, look, the police came to the house and they carried everybody, mm. all my cousins. Mm. As God will have me, my grandma came back home. She was, you know, frantic. Mm. So she ran to Sir Mobolaji Johnson, God bless his soul, who was like, you know, mm. he lived down the street. So mm. he had to go himself to the police mm. station, and he said it. Why are you people troubling this woman? Why? You know, and then he came back to, of course, they started again. So my mom now entered breaking bottle level. <laughs> my mom would carry bottles and break on both walls. Oh my God. At the point, my mom oh even my had God. to announce that she had a gun. Whoa. Because these cousins of mine were not going to relent. They just wanted to frustrate their enemies. Mm. They wanted us out of that. And then every day they would gather and beat me up. Mm. So I couldn't fight back because fighting back would mean they would throw us out. Whose money are we going? Where are we going to get? Where? So I had to just chest that. I would even wash my school uniform back then, mm. dry it. In the morning, they would throw it on the floor. They would Whoa. make it into a rack. So mm. I would wear dirty uniform to school and they would punish me every day. You know what? We'll get to all of that, but I would just say it's been a journey to mm. get here. I hope yeah. I answered the question. Yes, you know, yes, at the yes, point, yes. I think I derailed. Yes. It's been a journey getting here. Yeah. And then 
uh, you the, um, having gone through all those experience, the, I mean your childhood experience, how do you see yourself as a husband or a father in the future? That's a beauty. That's another beautiful question. I always wanted to be a father because I love kids, mm -hmm. you know, and because I was a class teacher at a point, mm -hmm. you know, for a year, mm -hmm. I taught Premier 1, Premier 2, Premier 3, and mm -hmm. I think Premier 5 and 6. So I understand children, I understand their lingua. I know how to listen to their inner voice. Because I'm, I'm a, I mean, I'm a, I also have my kid in me. I'm like a kid, you know, mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. I'm very, you know, all over the place. So I like the fact that the things children will not tell their parents, they will tell me. Mm. You know, so I know how to get children to talk. Mm. And that's why a lot of my friends just bring their kids to my house. How they can trust me with their children, you know. And I know this is a period where... A lot of parents need to be very careful mm. because, you know, pedophilia is on the rise. Mm. So you can't really trust people with your children. Mm. But then when you see someone with good intentions, you will know, yeah. obviously. Now, as a father, I would let my children express themselves as much as they can. Simply because for someone like my dad, a Yoruba man mm. in a family household with so much angst, so much mm. pandemonium kills, toxicity mm. and whatnot. My dad would be church man every day. Family members would cry, ah, la ba, this child is running crazy. My dad allowed me to express myself, so I owe it to him to also pass it on to my kids and not say, you can't dress this way or you can't do this this way. I would allow them to express themselves as much as they can. Now, as a husband, I am a one-way traffic person. Mm. And once I am involved with someone, it's mm. that person. Mm -hmm. I do not mute it right here. I can't, it's, it's too much work to start looking elsewhere, which is why, like I said, I've not really been very lucky with love and in love and around love. I remember one of the episodes where I had someone in my life, I thought already that this was the person I was going to marry. But guess what? No. <laughs> I got beautiful breakfast. On my birthday, mm. this person was hosting the red carpet. And then we had another presenter come, but he wasn't so popular then. So I told her, once you interview celebrities, pass to this guy. Guess what? They are married now with twins. Oh. <gasps> wow. -woo. At my birthday, they met there. <laughs> breakfast, giddy. The last breakfast that just happened to me was Valentine's Day and Ooh. just a few. Remarkable yes. breakfast. I had done all the rounds. I'd gone out the previous and I'd arranged, you know, Valentine's Day to be special. I was excited. Mm -hmm. I'd done so much. If you see gifts, everything. And when I like, I, I'm a hopeless romantic. You can't <laughs> stop me. I always tell people love is like war. Easy to begin but hard to end. Mm, very, very. I'm still going through it. I'm in the process of, you know, heavy heartbreak, but I would, I would deal with it. That's why I distract myself with so much work mm -hmm. as I can. So, as a husband and a father, I will be reliable, I will communicate well, mm -hmm. because communication is very key. Mm -hmm. I'll be transparent to my kids and mm -hmm. my spouse, mm -hmm. and I think the only flaw <laughs> that I have mm -hmm. as a father, and let me put it this way, I've been a disciplinarian, that's why my sisters are grounded, because yeah. eh, they don't, but, but eh, go, go to, I remember those days when I go to the club, you know, and then maybe my sisters are there with Beverly Osu, mm -hmm. and the, the DJs, and I'll see, they're in the building. Won't be one that. They will leave, they'll pass the back. <laughs> if I catch them. I said, what are you doing here? Then I remember one time, one of my youngest sisters, a very expressive one, had a skirt that was so short and she was at silver bed. Somebody called me and said, did you see yourself before she left the house? I said, where is she? They said, um, um, the gallery. I said, fantastic. Now, they were talking to boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The moment I entered, I think one of them said, your brother is here. They didn't turn back. They just turned. They just looked at me. We are going home. We are going home. <laughs> I said, good, good. Let's not disgrace ourselves here. Eh? Me, I'll get home before you. So I had to because I was the father, mother, uncle, mm. brother, you know, guardian and everything. So I am a disciplinarian in that effect. But then when it comes to matters of the heart, I can be a bit jealous, especially mm. when it's somebody I really like. In terms of if I see you extending attention to, you know, because of the kind of person that I am and I'm everybody's friend, you know, I tend to get, it's, and it's an emotion I discovered with people that I really love, mm. you know. I think it's just because I want their attention mm -hmm, constantly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I can't stand it when someone doesn't communicate. If I'm with you and your communication level is bad, ah, no, no, no. Like, I'll be asking, but what came, what? And please, I wanted to, there was something I was going to post this evening. I said, ah. God, why are you always sending broken people to me? <laughs> Am I a mechanic? If I'm a mechanic, let me know if I have to be fixing people up and down. But I've realized that I'm a fixer, I'm a rescuer, so let's hope that, you know, that the Derele and husband Derele would make things happen. So really, for style, Yes. Um, there's this popular saying that um, comfort is key. Yes. So. so for you, how comfortable are you in your Hey, me, I sacrifice comfort for fashion until I will not lie. So I say that style is when they are running you out of town, but you make it look like you're leading the parade. Mm. I have worn the most uncomfortable stuffs. Mm. I remember there was a time that I was living, um, I think, Boss Bar, 
Mm. You know, I was wearing like skyscraping platforms and people were trying to take pictures. So running down the stairs, they fell. Mm. So I fell. Then instead of me falling well, my leg got stuck in the banis, in the railings. So called Sheka. Mugboto Sheka. But I said, <laughs> I will not remove that shoe. <laughs> so while I was in the car, I felt my leg swelling in the shoe. I said, mm. me, remove my shoe and walk barefoot. <laughs> it's not happening. No way. So I limped majestically. So the car, when I got into the car, I took it off, my ankle had swollen. Mm -hmm. I've had, you know, near accidents, even on stage. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was hosting Night of a Thousand Laughs, there were so many wires on the stage. So I didn't say I was wearing my usual platforms. I stepped aside, but I turned it into play, play. I, there was one time, I, I, would, I think we need to show that video where it went viral. It was even on National Geographic channel recently. They said, mm -hmm. ah, they call it the science of stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I was number one, where I was flipping my hair. I didn't see the oh, stage, yeah, yeah, and then I felt, but the stage cut into my skin. Mm. And that show was for two days. It was a very big show in Port Harcourt. Mm. So I was bleeding, I was wearing white. I felt the blood rushing. I, you know, introduced the act, ran backstage. The owner of the show, very nice woman, she was like, should we stop? I said, Kimi, I've not collected balance. <laughs> I told the models, come, come, spray perfume, my leg will heal. <laughs> and I went back on stage and acted like nothing happened. Mm. So, yeah, I have sacrificed comfort <laughs> for fashion most times. But then now I'm at a point now where you know, I, I have started to embrace the comfort of comfort. Mm. So, you know, I wear some things, you know. Once, once, I'll just cinch waist, I'll, you know, like now I'm wearing high waist pants. It's sucking my belly. <laughs> but uh, it, fashion is pain. Yeah. Yes, mm. it's pain. Mm. Fashion unites us, but style separates us. Mm. Fashion is, you know, it's, um, how do I put it? Fa um, everyone can buy fashion, but style you have to own. Mm. So I am who I am. Mm -hmm. I've carried, there was a time I had, hey, one hair on my head. Oh, Jojo, more headache, headache, headache. Mm -hmm. Irony, I said, this hair will conquer it. So I like to conquer pain for fashion, mm. sacrifice comfort for fashion, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. So who do you give out your old clothes and shoes to? Ha, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> it's so crazy that, there's some clothes that I still hold on to. I think clothes have sentimental value. When you look at some of the clothes you wore as a baby, mm -hmm. you know, to when you entered your teenage age, and then, you know, to your adolescence, you know, and to adulthood. There's some clothes that I can't let go. Mm -hmm. so there's some clothes back then because I couldn't afford for people to make my clothes that I made myself. Mm -hmm. I don't make my clothes now myself. I feel like, nah, mm -hmm. that's an era of my life that's passed. Mm -hmm. But I dry clean them, I look at them, and I reminisce on how far I have come and how far I am going to go. And I think that some people see clothes as text. If you just wear clothes and throw it. I see clothes as a narrative. Mm -hmm. You know, they project a story of your life. So when I have to do shows that have to do with style mm -hmm. or my clothes, I bring back clothes from back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I let them know I sat down, I constructed the buttons, I cut. Then I knew, I, I, are they cut? And because I didn't have too many clothes, I had like two shirts, three jeans. I will wear the same thing eh, mm. for that month and you'll never know. Mm. I will patch, zip, hook, pin, stretch, shred. Like, I, you know, I was a one-man walking army, one-man glam squad. Mm -hmm. uh, no, and I'm glad that I learned that. You know, it's, it's something I can look back now and laugh. Mm. So, who do I get my clothes? It's crazy, but there's some that I have to let go of. And then, here's the crazy. Ah, uh, all my friends. Ah, uh, let me start. Beverly Osu, number one. Uh, Erica, uh, Kimopra. Once they come to mass like this, Brava. Even Titi, <laughs> Titi Dynamite, they will just go through my stuff. And the way my body is framed, I'm lucky to have this sort of physique that I have. Mm -hmm. I have what you call a shallow body. I can <laughs> fit into anything. <laughs> anything. anything. I can wear practically anything. So they always just find something. Even um, Basi, who was on, Basi from Sierra Leone, who mm -hmm. was on Big Brother Africa, mm -hmm. once he called, you first of all pack. <laughs> so they always people packing things. All my friends, you know, come through, I allow them. Because I feel like, oh, well, you like it, so take it. So, yeah. I would say I'm still holding on to some clothes. <laughs> you know, we'll do, a, we'll do a survey sometime. I'll take right. you through, Your you know, some of them. Yes. All right, fine. So right now we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, Rene is going to tell us how romantic he is. Oh, oh, yeah. Welcome to Boss Lady Meets. Welcome back to Boss Lady Meets. And like I mentioned earlier, Derele Edu. Family member. My family, family member. member. Emma, some of the subjects of, uh, <laughs> of, of TV show. Family member. Derele Edu is my guest today and we've been having fun. So before we went on a short break, I asked him how romantic he is and he's going to tell us. I'm very, I'm a, hope, see, I'm a hopeless romantic. <laughs> I live for love. I love love. I love the concept of love. I love the fact that, you know, 
with love for me. Let me tell you how my own loving pattern is, is giving. Mm. So the hot breakfast I got on Valentine's Day mm -hmm. <laughs> has spanned like seven months. Mm. And I sat back and I thought about, you know, because I'm like a deep overthinker. I overthink. And I mean, I realized this situation made me realize that I'm a people pleaser. Mm. And that's one thing I need to work on because people pleasing is a black hole mm. of seductive energy. It will mm. just drain you. Mm. Bah! And why was I people pleasing this person? Was it because I wanted to validate my worth that, you know, I can take care of you or I needed to say, don't look anywhere. Look here, look here. I don't know what the reason was, but I would stretch myself to the limits, mm. you know. And I'm, I'm the kind of person who, once you are in my life, I'm concerned about your education, your money, your, in, you know, well inflow and outflow, your well-being, your welfare. I will push you, pa. I'm, I, I mean, I've not shared this anywhere, but I mean, I can as well say it, you know, on the Boss Lady Show, small exclusive. So my beautiful late friend, Goldie, you know, a lot of people just thought we're friends, but we did have a few intimate moments. Mm. And that's why I would say that I was the driving force. God bless her soul. She's resting mm. in power. Mm. I knew she was married, of course. Mm. So, you know, we kept that secret, but mm. we had... It wasn't, it wasn't more than friendship. We had had a few, you know, mm -hmm. we entered the corner. <laughs> the borrow of the one yes, corner. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And... That was why I was constantly, because I wanted to see her mm. make things happen. I felt she was, you know, I was traveling with her everywhere. Mm. And when she told me she liked this, I asked her when, you know, she had the present mm. alliance. I said, do you like this guy? And mm. she said, yes, that's all. Mm. I'm the sort of person who, even if I am intertwined with you, I have a sentimental attachment. If you come and tell me you like someone, I like transparency. When you mm. tell me, I will like that person for you. Mm. And I will have to understand mm. because... I'm also a complicated character and very complex, so I can understand. Usually, I'm a one-way traffic person. I don't want to share, mm -hmm. but if it has to come to that, I, mm -hmm. I will share. You know, there was, there was somebody who I was involved with back in the day. She's married now. I, as in, I was ready to alter my lifestyle for this mm -hmm. person, you know, and when she told me she was in a relationship, I said, ah, I don't mind sharing, you know. Mm -hmm. she, she looked at me, ah! So, sure, okay, sir. Hey, 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 you know, because hey, hey, hey. I saw there was something she brought into my life that mm. I didn't see mm -hmm. anywhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, hmm, I don't date win show. Mm. The win share, that one, when I say I'm not doing so I, it was like a, you know, just to pass fancy, but this person fell for me. Mm. Hey, mm. Um, uh, when I say I know do, I fell sick. They took me, I remember they took me to 11 hospitals. They couldn't pick what was wrong with me. Mm. I almost lost my life that mm. period. As in, I couldn't go to church. My dad had to carry me on his shoulder. I'm talking as, as an adult, so I couldn't walk. And then every day, this girl, she'll come, she'll give me, you know, juices. Mm. You'll be okay, you'll be okay. Then one day, my mother just, ah, my mother, prayer warrior, who is a non-Nigerian, no? My mm. mother woke up and just told her first things first, you, don't come to this house again. Mm. She now faced me. You are following me to MFM today. Mm. It took us one hour to walk from the house to the bus stop because mm. I couldn't walk. Mm. My mother said she was slapping me on the road because mm. my mother is brutal. Mm -hmm. You will get to this church, you know, and that's how, you know, my mom, of course, we, you know, we had prayers, we did everything, deliverance services and everything. And you see, that's how my mom was just able to break that spell, whatever it was, the jinx or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So would I say, hmm, the story is long, <laughs> but I think that, you know, answering the question, mm. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. All right. Over the years, you've yes. suffered multiple attacks. Yes. Over your sexuality. Yes. How have you been able to survive it? Who you go to bed as mm. is different from who you go to bed with. Mm -hmm. And I've been constantly reprimanded, judged, dragged. Let me use the word dragged. Mm. I, I'm still wondering if they found me with a certain person <laughs> under the bed. But it's fine. People can make their assumptions as exactly. much as they can. Their opinions are not my reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, for someone like me as a one-way traffic person, I've said I've not been very lucky with love. Yes, I've had a lot of unfortunate people come into my life. Very unfortunate. Mm. And Oloribu. <laughs> but it's fine. I've said it this year. God protect me from Oloribu. Ruku. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, the sexuality thing came about when... You know, I'd hit the peak of, you know, my VJ in career. Mm. So back then, you know, when I was on Kidivision 101, you know, 94, mm -hmm. 95, 96, when I go to my people, oh, stop it, come here. Are you a boy or a girl? I got that question so much. Even when I got into Unilag, like, mm -hmm. yeah, one, are you a boy or a girl? Are you a boy or a girl? I will now say, do you want to check? <laughs> I just said, let's make fun of the situation. Now I'm, you know, this VJ who is everywhere, everybody knows, and then they have to find a loophole somewhere. Mm. So when you watch me on TV, you know, when you, Turn on your screen and you see me, the outlandish hair, flamboyant clothes, you know, skyscraping shoes. 
I do that, it's a distraction, no doubt. But then what I'm saying is as intelligible as it can be because I am not a dumb blonde. I'm mm -hmm. not about, you know, the theatrics mm -hmm. of my craft. I'm more about the deliverables, the emotional intelligence, and what I am saying. I know what I am saying, mm -hmm. you know. And I wish people looked past mm -hmm. the physical and dwelt on that. That's why I feel like my work is very underrated. Mm. My portfolio of work, especially in this mm. industry, mm. is very underrated. People... And so now you have me, you have people comparing me to, you know, different kinds of personalities who they feel have similarities, but it's nothing similar there, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. That's the media for you. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, where I put myself in. Mm -hmm. If I know I can't deal with it, I should go and get a nine to five. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, mm -hmm. do what you can, say what you can. I know who I am. So that's why I said who you go to bed as is different from who you go to bed mm -hmm. with. So I remember in one of my interviews, I did say yes. You know, at that point, there was so much going on in my life. So I got involved with the same sex person. Mm -hmm. But here's the crazy part. I never, and I'm saying it authoritatively, today is a Sunday morning, but I was mm. day. I never was intimate with this person. Mm. Something just, so this person just had one kind of bad luck, sha, mm. you know, and it just, so people would ask, ah, okay, so you had this thing with this person, but relationships are not all about intimacy. Mm -hmm. It's not about under the bed covers. Yes, there are people we have sexual chemistry mm -hmm. with. Yes, mm -hmm. no doubt. I even have exes who are even married who still want to reignite you know, sexual intimacy, and I refuse because mm. I respect the institution of marriage. Mm. I believe in karma. Mm. Let me not go and enter mm. boys' quarter now. Mm. When is my own turn now? Ah. <laughs> so, be fair, mm. I avoid it as much as I can, mm. but I am a very sexual human being. Mm. I, my sex drive is very high. Mm -hmm. I am very, I like intimacy. I'm into body contact. You mm. know, I like, mm. you know, but I've learned to discipline myself over the years. So, about that whole sexuality, I think they should be tired by now. At the point where they were asking me, so what is it? What's the sexual? I just said, I'm a sexual outlaw. Take it like that. <laughs> now, I don't even know which one I would say. Now, I would say, okay, uh, yes, fluidity. At the point, I started telling people, okay, I am my own sugar daddy. Mm. Hmm? My own sugar daddy that I have a strong masculine side mm. designed to take care of my feminine side. Mm. So if I want diamonds today, I can go out and I can buy. And I will authoritatively say it on boss. Yes, you see, getting... Getting to brass stacks, I have never, F-U-C-K-E-D, mm -hmm. I know, mm -hmm. P-G, and I have never been F-U-C-K-E-D for money. Mm -hmm. I would never, mm -hmm. which is why I have a lot of all these young kids calling me, ha, ah, they want to meet so-so person, they want to do runs, mm -hmm. and I tell them, categorically, if you think I'm about that life, nah. Mm -hmm. This is hard work, it's a product of hard work. Mm -hmm. I have been beaten up by mm -hmm. influential people mm -hmm. because I refuse to bow down oh. to their whims and caprices. Mm -hmm. There's a very popular multi-billionaire who they wanted to, you know, I, then I, because I didn't have anybody to talk to about mm. these things, I was stuck and then, you know, I thought I was going to get an interview out of this person, mm. but they dragged me and they were about to carry me and I was like, ah, ah you know, they, already the person had started, mm. you know, harassing mm. me in the car mm. and then it was a moving vehicle, they opened it and they pushed me out, mm. but I think, you know, I'm very grateful to God for the fact that I have never, I've been, you know, gotten mm. through a bit of assault, harassment mm. and whatnot, mm. but it never went above that mm. because God just came through to say, this is not your calling. This is not going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. I know the kind of child that you are, mm -hmm. and I will not encourage this. So, yes, of course, I would know people in high places, but mm -hmm. I've refused to succumb to their sexual advances and demands. Mm -hmm. I would rather, if I'm broke, I will sit in the comfort of my house mm -hmm. and feel fly. I would never, and I've never traded sex for money, if that's how to describe it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, PG, rated. <laughs> All right, do you practice any religion? And then I am an absolute Christian. Oh, a devoted Christian. Mm. And I think now is the time where, you know, I'm up every morning and I love what Pastor Jerry Izzy does, you know, mm. the yeah, NSPPD, yes, too. what, you know, what God cannot do does not does exist. exist in our you know, lives, I yeah. so fulfilling. After I do my morning run, mm. you know, I run around my estates, I get back and I join. And it's very therapeutic and very fulfilling and also very inspiring. You know, I'm a, ah, I know they use God, play, oh. And then it's so crazy because in my estate, my neighbors, the person in the house too, once called one and said, ah, I'm always hearing this. And I know that's their religion. Do they really they pray like this? <laughs> I say, are they pray? Oh. You know, at times I even accost my dad because, you know, my dad is 80. I say, you are not praying for your children, no. You are a lazy pray, prayer warrior. Because my mom is constantly, you know, my mom is our driving force. She's mm. praying prays for her children first before herself. So I am an absolute Christian. And I think it's not about going to church because 
I've gone to churches where I have been discriminated and segregated upon. Mm -hmm. I've gone to churches where I've made to feel unwelcome. Mm -hmm. And I operate on, go where you are celebrated, not tolerated. Mm -hmm. exactly. Amen. Yeah, that's me. Once I see that your energy is off, will disappear me. Mm -hmm. So I like to do that in the comfort of my home. Even the crossover service from the 31st to the 1st, the church I went to, I was a spectacle. Everybody was, they were not praying, they were looking at me mm -hmm. in my shine, shine clothes. Yeah, why did you dress this glamorous? And I said, I'm starting the year on a big bag. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. First, go and pray. Don't look at me. Why are you looking? Everybody just, they were doing, they were praying, you know, they were looking, ah, 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 kilo kosi, kilo wo. You know, when it was time to do offering, they had to wait, because I was almost like, the, you know, the, I was at the back row. The, I could feel the eyes on me, but I mean, it's fine. That's life, really. So yes, a practicing Christian, a devout Christian, I know they use, ah, uh, no, now God first. Different. Before I leave the house, I anoint myself. Mm. And there's a awesome. special prayer point I say every time. Let my light shine before all men, that they may see my good works and glorify my Father in heaven. Amen. Yeah, and that's why I'm always shining wherever awesome. I go. Like, is there any, anything that you, is there any secret that you have which is not open to anybody? Can you, do you have ah, a true I don't have a love child anyway, because people thought I had a love child before. They've seen me with children, so they assume they're my children. Um, let me see, secret, let me, ah, that's like a, a good weakness, way. something. A weakness, like, ah. You know, we see really as a strong Yes, so, yes, yes. Oh, no, of course, I have, I have weaknesses. Um, ah, I think I've been able to curb that. So before, you know, um, before the birth of Instagram, when it was Twitter, and you know, Twitter was such, everybody's in your business, I used to get a lot of frustrating tweets. And I used to wonder, what's going on? Why are people, like, attacking me left, right, center? It did get to me. There are times that I'll sit down and I'll cry. But then I'll say to myself, why am I crying? Mm. So there's something I do now called cosmic tennis. Mm. That's what I call it. So for every negative remark mm. and opinion you put on my post or on social media, when I read it, what I do is mm, I wave it aside. Then I go to everybody else that I see on my timeline mm. and I throw positive things. Mm. I know people always say, nah, they really your comments. It's my corner. Get it and get it right. My comments are not... That less so because people like Instagram comments and Twitter comments, they are not to get people to like them. No, it's my mode at that point in time. If I get something hateful, I throw it back into something positive and I go to different people, you know, phone care, whoever is on my timeline at that point, and I write something to celebrate the person because it's my own way of telling the universe, no, that opinion is not my reality, mm -hmm. and it's my own way of sharing light mm -hmm. and love, you know, as much as I can. But let me see. What would it be? Nice, eh, secret, secret, secret. Childhood. Childhood. Truth. I think, okay, let me just, this one, you know, back then when I used to work with the music channel, for every time, you know, we had to go on the field of work, every time, red carpet, you know, so we'd go, and I was producer, presenter, everything. There was a particular media personality from another station that's on terrestrial TV and, mm -hmm. you know, local TV mm -hmm. that used to harass me. And when I mean harass me, touch me inappropriately. I couldn't go to anyone about it. And there are times when I'll go to, and if I see this person, I can't go and pee. Because mm. if I go into a person, come and start, that, mm. ah, I say, stop, the person you're about, mm -hmm. stop. Ah, it was really bad. And there was no way I thought I could go and tell my boss. Because, eh, mm -hmm. well, you too, what were you looking for? Mm -hmm. I, you know those sort mm -hmm. of things. So mm -hmm. I had to keep mute and endure this for so long. And I had to learn the art of self-defense. Mm. Or more, the day this person, ah. So that's why I tell people now that I'm not, if you insult me, because I've seen people that, you know, have said a lot of unprincipled mm -hmm. things about me. I've seen things online. I've, seen, I've even seen chats with mm -hmm. industry colleagues. Mm -hmm. So I've said it now. I'm not going to come online. No. This is my karate. It cannot wait. <laughs> I will catch you in public. Everybody will think that I'm doing madness. Mano. And there's somebody I am going to beat very soon. And I mean it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it. That's a secret. There's somebody who I am going to jack. And I think the person has, is beginning to suspect. I am going to jack you in public. I will beat of your you want to jack the person, are, just uh, invite uh, us. Uh, uh, I'll just make sure the person is there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mutin, you know when they say, Mutin, Reke, Abi, yeah, 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 exactly, uh, exactly. You know, and I feel that maybe there are times we just need, to, well, it's not violence, we're not preaching violence, but we need to just prove a point to some people that, don't judge me by my hair and shoes, though. Hmm. That man, I be, I get blockers. Hmm. I go, bo, I go <laughs> rush you. <laughs> no use age, you say, eh, we are all, eh, we are, eh, it's, it's a feminist in nature. Eh? Mm -hmm. Ah, no, 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 no. All right. Forget that strength, it comes from within. So really, any regrets in life? Ha, so far? Regrets. I think none, because I would have said, I wish I started out earlier. But I started at like age 10, 11, so I'm not regretting that. I think the only regret would be 
I know there have been lessons learned, you know, because when you enter relationships and situationships and entanglement safe with people, there's always a lesson embedded in all of that. I think for me that I just rushed in headlong, you know, expecting so much, mm. giving so much, expecting so much and getting nothing in return. Mm. So, yeah, even this last one, I'm still asking myself, what did the person bring to the table? I know that's unfair, but I have to ask because I brought... A Hundred Can on the we table. Have a, a sneak peek of who the, this so called person is? Ha, first things first, not an industry person, mm. but you know, someone a bit younger on that Gen Z mm. frequency. I just wanted to, because I've never been with anyone younger, it's mm. always been like my age. So I thought, let me see, but that was also a beautiful mistake, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad the person owned up very quickly and said, you know, you're doing so much for me, I can't, it doesn't even warrant how I feel about you, because you feel so much more for me and you're doing so much. Is My guilty conscience is worrying me. I can't match up, so, mm. so I just had to let the person go. I'm still dealing with it because mm. I could tell that the person didn't like me as much as I loved this person, so I have to <laughs> deal with this the best way I can. But no regrets whatsoever. They're all lessons learned for mm. me, you know, mm -hmm. and I feel like, you know, hey, the most important part about walking away from someone mm -hmm. is not even about the walking away in question. Mm -hmm. Even if you keep walking slowly away from the person, mm. forget it, the person is not going to run after you. Mm. So the sooner you deal with that knowledge, the better for you. Mm -hmm. They ain't going to come running. Okay. You better work out. Do you have any celebrity crush in the ah. industry, Nigerian entertainment industry? Back in the day, Regina Askia. Oh. Till date, there oh. can't be any like her. And she's hot. She's what? She was just, she was somebody I idolized so much. And I think she's one of the reasons why I had to, you know, I became very expressive because I was just, there was something, I just loved her vibe. Another person that I truly respect in the media industry who's also shaped, you know, my media thought processing and faculties definitely Fumi Oda. Mm. You know, growing okay. up, I watched Fumi Oda so Likewise. much, like, Likewise. you know, and how she's able to make people feel comfortable with her mm -hmm. in a matter of minutes mm -hmm. without knowing them. Without and adopting any her. phony accent. And she was mama, just this person. She said, yeah. no, it's just research and methodology. So mm -hmm. I learned that from her, mm -hmm. you know. And I think presently now, one person who I think is like a reminder of my younger self is Arya Star. Mm. And the first day she saw me, she ran up to me, oh my God. You know, so we have so much that we can relate with, mm. you know, definitely. I think there are just so many people that I admire and absolutely adore. And then, of course, my brother in India anytime, Dibanj, Bangali, yeah. I, ah, <laughs> Kilonjo, what's going on, dear? <laughs> All right, really, it's been an Thank awesome you. experience. What? I had a blast. Having this was... fun with you. Hey, Shay. It wasn't an interview it was just a fun-filled session. Thank yes, you so, so much, really. On the short notice... Thank you so much, really. Thank you, too. I really appreciate it. I'm sure definitely you're still going to come back here. Of but course. before you leave, can you show some of those of your moves, the way you bend? The way ah, you I come and bend. There is a pose, posing things. I can, you know, we leave the leg and touch. Ah, when I say boss lady, say Opa, boss lady. Opa. Opa, Opa. Opa. Right, thank, you. Really, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been fun having the really do on this edition of Boss Lady Meets. Definitely, I'll see you some other time. Till then, I remain your sincerely Josu Nisi Boss Lady. Take care, bye. Huh? Who's the queen of marketing retention? The queen of strategic branding? The queen of brand consultancy? The queen of eh, talent management A&R? Who is the boss lady in the building? Ladies and gentlemen, there is only one name that comes directly to mind. The show is Boss Lady Meets. It's live on YouTube, streaming on YouTube. Nisi Blogspot, a.k.a. Nisi Boss Lady, a.k.a. Uh -uh, queen. Are you acting my family member? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the show you should be watching. And I'm on the episode. If you refuse to watch, this here on my head will go under your armpits. You don't want that to happen. So stick with the very best because this is the show that puts a full stop at the top spot. Boss lady, she has underpromised but over delivered. Eh? You go to my dad. Boss lady, me, it's educated. She's not music, lifestyle, politics, or health. Everything is entertaining. Welcome to Boss Lady Meets.